And we are competing with the UN headquarters, I know, today with their live events and live panels. One of our esteemed colleagues, Dr. Ron Zalesny and his team, Elizabeth Rogers and Ryan Vinhall, are actually presenting uh, their phytorecurrent selection methodology at the United Nations. And um, this work is really phenomenal in that they've been able to do some species selection to look at which tree species best remove which type of contaminant. So it's exciting to have so many different features um, today from the US Forest Service to commemorate International Day of Forest. And again, we will begin in a, a couple more minutes here. And in the chat, please do put your name, your um, organization, and what country or city you're coming from today. Not only do we have Bangladesh, but we have Chicago, Illinois represented. So thank you, Mike. We got some folks from USDA. Indeed. <clears throat> All right, Todor, I am going to start. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Liza Pakeo with the Urban Outreach and Partnerships Unit of the U.S. Forest Service International Programs. I also help coordinate the Beyond Trees Network. And today, Beyond Trees Network is, like every year, working with the UN International Day of Forest to commemorate its theme, which is Forest and Innovation. And though today is the official day for International Day of Forest, we do celebrate and commemorate activities that highlight forest innovation across the year. So you might see down the road a few more webinars where folks are um, sharing their work from around the world. But before we begin with our presentation, I'd like to turn this over to our lead for you know, an International Day of Force, Aisha Gadiali, my colleague from the Policy Unit at International Programs. Aisha? Thank you, Liza. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And thanks to our guest speakers. Happy International Day of Forests. Happy spring. For those of you that don't know, International Day of Forests was started in 2012 by the UN Forum on Forests and the UN Food and Agricultural Organization. These are the two bodies that commemorate the day on March 21st and create videos, key messages, events that help propel and inspire people all over the world to do tree plantings, guest speakers, visit schools, work with children and youth, photo contests, video contests. There's really a range of activities that happen today to commemorate the theme. And as Liza said, this year it's innovation. Um, each year there's a different theme to help focus the discussion and highlight a benefit of forests around the world. Um, we are so proud at U.S. Forest Service. Every year we highlight a story on our website. Um, thanks to Liza and other colleagues, we have guest presentations, webinars, newsletters, um, and publications that usually come out to commemorate March 21st. If you haven't checked, please go to um, online to social media. You can go to INTL Forest Day, hashtag INTL Forest Day, and you can see posts from around the world as everyone today streams in and shares what they're doing to commemorate the day. So a big thank you to Liza for uh, organizing our 2024 event. And like she said, if you get a chance later on in the day, um, you can check out the UN headquarters. They usually post on YouTube after, after the fact, so you can always catch what you missed um, this morning there. And, and thank you, Liza, for putting up the, the link now. So happy International Day and look forward to learning more um, about this discussion.
And uh, thank you, Aisha. And now I'd like to turn this over to our guest speaker, Toido Rahman, who was in the Sundarbans, the largest contiguous mangrove ecosystem in the world, traveled um, 60 kilometers just for an internet access to be with us today to share his really innovative practice. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. And please, in the chat, feel free to type in any of your questions and we'll be sure to get them to Toido. And with that, Fodor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Elijah. Yep. Welcome all to my presentation and happy uh, uh, International Day of Forest. Uh, please allow me some time to share my, my presentation. <clears throat> Do you see my screen? We see you so far. Yeah, thank you. So uh, actually the innovation is drone, machine learning, and artificial intelligence for plantation monitoring and urban landscape planning. My name is, my name is Mohamed Tohidur Rahman. I work for Bangladesh Forest Department. I mainly do, we are involved with geospatial analysis, uh, landscape planning, and I'm also involved with uh, forest inventory and carbon inventory. So, so, excuse my... me, are you supposed to share your screen right now? I apologize for the interruption. It's not sharing. We just see you. We now yeah. see it. Can you see you. Yes. Sorry. So the uh, presentation have two main component. One is machine learning based uh, seedling detection and plantation monitoring. And the second one is digital twins for urban landscape plantation. So I'll take most of the time in first one and then these two uh, presentation. <clears throat> So, uh, Bangladesh Forest Department is a pioneer in coastal afforestation since they are doing this plantation in 1960s and they have uh, successfully raised more than 200,000 hectares of coastal plantation. And 77.6 thousand hectare plantation is targeted is one of the most largest project of Forest Department called Shubal Project. And that is why it requires robust plantation monitoring system to succeed forest landscape restoration plans. I'm sorry, having some issue, the slide is not changing. I'd be happy to share the slides if you want, and then you can tell me next. Uh, yes, please. I say yes, please, share your slides. I'm sorry, I have some uh, internet issue. The internet is not that stable. So maybe Liza can help me to uh, present the presentation. Uh, so can you, the, uh, you can uh, use the right mouse and next slide. Uh, sir, I was trying that also, but it's not working properly. So, Liza, can you please uh, back to the first slide or second it's okay. slide? It's... Yeah, okay, maybe next slide. Yeah, okay. So, actually, why we need this type of uh, drone-based uh, plantation monitoring system? Because most of the time in ground, uh, plantation monitoring is challenging. As we see in the picture, this is a coastal plantation. And it's really difficult to track those plantation surviving or plantation success in person. It's very difficult because of mud flood. Uh, the uh, monitoring team cannot work all the way to see the plantation uh, success. Can you next move to next? Yeah. So the water is raised during the high tide and it's difficult to see the plantation success state or plantation established state uh, in this coastal plantation. Can you please move? Next. This is another example.
I think he's just trying to get to log on everybody. I appreciate your patience. As we know, the internet these days is weaker than any signal to the International Space Station. So please bear with us as we get back online. Iqbal Bai, are you there? Toidor, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Can you please go to the next slide? Yes. So for the automatic process, there is another alternative way to use uh, satellite data. Next slide, please. Yes, but there is some difficult to find the proper satellite data for the region of interest because uh, at least need to purchase several square kilometer to get a, a very high resolution uh, satellite space. It's not possible to get for a particular area like 100 hectare or 200 hectare. So we need to take several square kilometer, which is truly expensive. And if you want to replicate this monitoring in the second year or third year, and then we have to buy this satellite image again and again, which is also very expensive. But if we can adopt a drone-based monitoring system, then it's not that difficult, and we can replicate and at any time without any significant cost. Next, please. So this is some example how coastal plantation looks like. This is one scenario. We'll see. Uh, uh, can you please move next to T4 slide? I will look how the coastal best. Yes, see, there is some green LJ. So, this green LJ comes in a particular month of the year, but after that year, this green LJ disappears. So, this also has a significant effect on automation. So, we, we exclude that also. Can you please move to the next? <clears throat> this is another type of coastal plantation area, which is. Uh, clear and we don't have any uh, green green under history except that seedling. So we explored this also. Can you please back ne next? Yeah, see this is the coastal plantation along with coastal grasses. These grasses come naturally and sometimes it made difficulty for the automation because the seedling is also green, the grass is also green and the height is almost similar. And in that case, this also have a significant effect on model development and automatic seedling detection. So we will we'll see that uh, result also. Next, please. Yes, so overall objective was uh, automatic seedling detection with geolocation and automatic counting with machine learning techniques. Uh, to detect geolocation of seedling gap, I mean, in a uh, like in a particular area, all the area is not equally established. Some in some point the seedling has raised successfully. In some area the signal has not grown successfully, has died. That is why that is another objective of our study to find those area to suggest field manager to provide field manager. These are the area the seedling has not survived, and then uh, uh, we need to do further inter intervention in, in this particular area. So we want to provide this map also and detect best fitted deep model learning model parameter. Which parameter is giving us best model? So uh, this doing this automatic, that is another uh, object. And another object was to make a digital twin for policymaker to understand seedling growth, seedling health, and real-time view. Next, please. So the major step was like pre, uh, field work to prepare drone fly because the, all the phone was taken automatic by automatic considering ground sampling distance, front overlap and side overlap. And uh, we created some ortho photo like satellite imagery, but it's very high resolution, like two centimeter, three centimeter resolution, high resolution imagery ortho photo. We created some elevation model. This elevation model gives us information about the height of those particular area and uh, DTM give us the information about the terrain information of that area and lastly the CHM canopy height model gives us information about the tree height 
and any object height like building or whatever is present in the in our region of interest is possible to get that uh, height of that particular area and the, uh, um, another major step was to find the parameters to make a best fitted model for this automation process and uh, advanced analysis using deep learning technique of machine learning next please Uh, this is the drone I ca used to capturing those emos in this particular area. This is DJI uh, uh, DJI two hundred matrix. Yeah, next please. These are the some uh, tools that I use for that. Uh, let's not go details on that. Next. Uh, these are the software that I use to create this Autopo 2 DAME and this thing. And push to get a push data creation, I used my Agisoft Meta Shift Pro software and cloud compare. And for the automation, I used uh, uh, region based conventional neural network of uh, deep learning. Next, please. Uh, first, I create a uh, KML file of a particular area that we want to do intervention, or, or, uh, and then we use a uh, third-party apps for uh, automatic flight, automatic image capture, and then uh, we also uh, do some sort of uh, camera setting before getting because because it's very important to get uh, blurless very image. Without blurless image, it's not possible to detect the uh, auto uh, automatic seedling counting. Uh, so we, we consider uh, ground sampling distance, altitude, flight altitude, and the overlapping side and front overlapping to get the best uh, orthophoto and dim. Next, please. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we produce uh, 1.5 to 2.5 centimeter orthophoto that has been created in Ag Agisoft Metashape Pro software. And this is also because uh, many uh, managers, they do not have this uh, Agisoft software or IGIS software. This is uh, some special, special, specialized software for the uh, geospatial people. And then uh, we created another layer in Google Earth. So it's very simple. Anyone can open Google Earth and anyone can uh, see the particular area in uh, 3D view and live view in Google Earth. So uh, it's possible to do that also. Next, please. This is uh, one orthophoto example. The seedling height in this place is, uh, let's say, around 10 to 15 centimeter. Still, it's possible to identify its leaves and everything. This is very high resolution orthophoto snaps. Let's move to next. This is an example of DEM, Digital Elevation Model. Uh, as, as Liza said that I am in Sundarban and I don't have my drive with me. So I could not bring an appropriate example of uh, urban landscape. So this was with my laptop that uh, DEM of that particular plantation area. So this is how we can create elevation and height of any particular area. Next, please. So in data, data analysis, we use deep learning function with different parameters, different backbone to find, to figure out which model is best fitted. Some models was underfitted and some model was overfitted. So there was some false positive and false negative, And then we decided one best fitted model with the highest accuracy and highest precision. Move to next, please. Yeah, okay. So for model, uh, for constructing a model, first I have tried this RCNN model because this RCNN model also, I mean, uh, conventional neural network model, region-based conventional neural network model. And this model has different backbone, like ResNet 50, ResNet 101, ResNet 152, and uh, many others. And we also have different batch, like 4, 8, and validation. So. First, we explore the parameter. Which parameter is giving best precision for this RCNN model? So we saw that ResNet 50 backbone, batch 4, and validation 10 was best fitted model for this RCNN. And then later on, we compared this RCNN with some other 
model, some other data frame like ELO3, ELO4, SSG, Retina, Net. And we found that with the ResNet 50 backbone, region-based conventional neural network is giving highest precision and highest accuracy in our to detect automatic seedling. So we get model precision around 0.86 and which was 95.65% um, accurately was able to detect automatic seedling. We'll see in next slide. Next, please. Uh, this is another graph. We can see the train and prediction is very close and the uh, precision was 0 0.80. This almost overfit, almost uh, well fitted, overlaid with this other. So the training of the uh, model was able to predict, able to validate uh, in the same way. So can you please move to next slide? Yeah, here one example, see in left hand side, we can see a small plantation. And in right hand side, in the bound box, we can see our automatic model was able to detect. So if we see one, two, three, fourth image, fourth image, so small branches of seedling was able to capture. Our model was able to capture small, small branches also. So in the last image downwards, we can see the entire seedlings happening. Even in right hand side, there was some shadow. So maybe the, our model was able to find that shadow also. It's, it's considered that shadow because while doing this uh, training, we also considered this shadow effect because except uh, 12 noon in the morning or in the afternoon, if we take drone data, there will be some sapling shadow, seedling shadow. So we do not consider this shadow, then model will not give us that uh, accurate result. So can you please move to next? Yes, this is one example of automatic seedling detection. If we see, this is one particular area of one hectare, and all those red polygon is seedling. So our automatic machine learning model was able to detect all these seedling with their geolocation. Next, please. Yeah, okay. There, then there was a concern. How we'll understand how accurately this model is working. And then what we did, we counted each and every seedling manually in ArcGIS to compare what was the result in machine learning based automatic result and what is our uh, uh, manual counting result. So we made com we make a comparison between these two and we were, tap we were able to uh, find the accuracy. Next please. Yeah, here we can see every seedling has two color, two different color of polygon. One is red polygon, another is yellow polygon. Meaning one polygon is detected by our automatic machine learning, and another polygon is detected by manual counting. So we can see there is no difference. Most of the plantation, most of the seedling is detected by automatic uh, model, is also detected by manual counting. So maybe we can proceed to next slide. Yeah, as I said in my objective that uh, all the plantation will not grow equally. In some part of plantation will go very nice and some of our plantation is died. So we need to do vacancy filling. We need to need to do replant of those uh, particular places. So in my research, I have created this 10 meter by 10 meter grid, but it's possible to based on based on the particular area, based on our intervention area, it's possible to do like 20, 20 meter, even 100, 100 meter, whatever we want, it's possible. And then this color grid is, let's say first one is 0 0.9, the greenest one is highest 21 to 47. So this map provides us information in which grid, which area the plantation seedling is going well, the surviving rate is well, and in which area we do not have good condition of seedling and the seedling was not survived. And those in those area, we need to replant those area. Because as I said, the coastal area is very muddy. It's not, not very easy to work and to identify those gaps. But if we can provide this uh, geo geolocation based map to our uh, field managers, field, field people, then they will be able to identify those areas and they will be able to replant in those areas. 
can you please move to next <sighs> yeah there is one uh, comparison like uh, for example betua one was one uh, site uh, let's discuss this scenario a little later so uh, total number of automatic counting by our model was 3187 and total number by manual counting was 3216 there is no false positive but there was 29 false negative meaning the accuracy was 99.09 percent for second one the accuracy was 83.34 percent third one is 97.15 percent now why these differences because as i said i, I showed you uh three four pictures some some crystal plantation has green algae some crystal plantation has uh green natural grasses of similar height of seedling and that is why if we see the scenario then it will give us a clear idea so for the first one i mean 99.09 percent accuracy the scenario was no regress there was no regress at all and there was the image was decaying during low tide and there is low green algae so this is important like we need to decide when we will go for image collection if we go if we select the appropriate month then there will be low green algae or there will be no there will be no green algae or limited green algae and that is very helpful for us to automatically detect those things and uh like this scenario so we are describing model accuracy and we are describing we are describing scenario also so when we'll try for this automation we need to consider this scenario next please so there was some limit, limitation of the model uh like uh model cannot detect seedling accurately in the following condition very high origrass cover if the origrass is similar height of uh, seedling then it's failed to detect uh it is it, failed, failed to detect automatical signal uh, seedling and the accuracy is very low and very high green algae so if we select the appropriate month then we'll be able to gain very uh, high high accuracy because this green algae will stay only for two months and then it will remove by naturally and uh, there are some limitations. I also tried for terrestrial plantation and jhao plantation. A jhao plantation meaning uh, a plantation uh, beside the coast. So uh, I find difficulty like terrestrial plantation, there is some green under history. So the model was not able to differentiate between the seedling and between the uh, green under history. So this is another uh, interesting topics that uh, we, we want to work later to uh, figure out how we can uh, we can overcome these issues. Next is. So in recommendation, we want to say that need to consider the seasonal, seasonal variation. This is very important for automatic uh, seedling detection. We need to select the season of a year that those time the green algae will be very limited and the origrass will be limited and we need to take this image automatic image flying during the low tide then only we'll get the best fitted model and we'll get very high precision high accuracy accuracy 99 point something percent accurately uh, automatic seedling uh, detection so another was like uh, ground sampling distance could be up to 10 centimeter. For my purposes, I used only two centimeter. Why? I was trying to, I was a little, uh, little bit worried if I, if I take uh, 10 centimeter, maybe I will not be able to uh, identify the uh, seedling automatically. But this two centimeter meaning high volume of data and the low area of, uh, uh, low lower area, because if you increase the uh, resolution, the data volume will be heavy and you will not be able to uh, do a larger area, a large area. That is why we suggested that it can be reached up to 10 or 10 centimeters. So in 10 centimeter, data volume will decrease and we'll have the scope to increase the plantation's area, like 10 hectare, 15 hectare, 200 hectare, 300 hectare, something like that. And we also, uh, 
need to uh, i think we think that uh, need to adopt this latest technology based solution for coastal plantation monitoring this is also possible in many terrestrial uh, terrestrial plantation except some under history green under history vegetation uh, for those terrestrial plantation that have green under history vegetation we want to explore multi spectra or lidar based solution using artificial intelligence and machine learning next please yeah, this is digital twins, a new term, new latest term, the digital twins for urban planning. This is very helpful. It could be a, 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 a very helpful tools for urban planner, urban manager, for a uh, scientific city management, scientific landscape management, and greenery management. In left hand side, we can see very high resolution ortho photo. And in right side, we can see the elevation. So this provides us 3D model. In the same time, this provides us height of every individual object. And we are also getting open space where we can do further intervention for our particular project, particular purposes. Next, please. Okay, in left hand side, see, we can uh, see this uh, digital elevation model. From this model, we can get uh, two types of information. One is terrain information, like the elevation and uh, slope aspect of terrain. At the same time, we can get the height of different objects, including tree, building, structure, and many other things. So, next, please. And uh, digital twin provide a very uh, high resolution 3D images, elevation information, as I said, from DAM, terrain information from DTM, and tree and other object height from uh, canopy height model. This is also possible, like uh, I missed somehow one, one slide here. It's also possible to find the land temperatures, surface temperature to see in which area is uh, emitting more heat, more temperature, and we can focus on that particular area to reduce the heat for a uh, for the city. So maybe uh, this is, uh, I, I want to, I want to share my slide for now. I just want to show that uh, particular uh, land surface temperatures. system just give me a second yeah this is uh, one of our uh, newly developed urban area in dhaka city so by this city, we can understand from where the heat is emitting, where the soil is emitting more temperature, more heat. And we can make our plan for greenery plan based on this uh, surface temperature to reduce this temperature along with those digital uh, orthophoto and then elevation and terrain model. So I just want to show you another uh, quick show in Google Earth uh, how it works. Uh, this is one example like uh, can you see my google art screen yes yeah thank you so if we see in this google art up to this level we are seeing this is a river but if we make little bit more job see there's one hectare uh ortho photo this is overlaid in the google art so if you zoom in, this is 3D. Each of these point has lat and long halo. So if you zoom in, you, you are able to see even a small leaves of this uh, 15 centimeter uh, 
height even even some uh, bar foot pin in the in the coastal area meaning you have uh, flexibility to understand to see all the thing and you can draw here the polygon as i said that i am in sundarbon in field and i don't have my external drive with me i am i i, I apologize for that and that is why actually i could not bring the exact example of the uh, city landscape planning so this is take an example like we can draw a polygon and we can assign a particular task for this polygon so this allow managers planners and decision makers all together in room we can make zoning we can make zoning based on different intervention and we can provide this map the zoning map everything to the field manager to implement this as per the plan proper planning uh, <clears throat> So this was actually my last slide. So thank you very much for your uh, patience and kind attention. So in case you have some uh, suggestion or if you have some query, you can ask. So I just noticed one uh, question from the chat box. There was a question like, uh, what was the limitation of uh, traditional survey? So firstly, if we go here, Firstly, traditional survey is a sampling method. And this one is complete enumeration with the suggest, suggestion where you need to do further intervention. We need to replant the area. And see, this is the scenario in field. It's very difficult, time consuming, and, uh, and, and, and very, very hard work. At the same time, uh, there is some other biases also. Like for 500 hectares, 500 acres, if you want to do a scientific sampling, we need to get that shape file or polygon to make the random plot. And then we can use that. But in most of the cases, in field due to this inaccessibility and due to this harsh scenario, and they are not able to do the scientific uh, random sampling system everywhere equally. So there is a lack of uh, lack of uh, science beyond of that, and in the same time there is a lack of biasness also. That could be human bias or some other bias to uh, get the exact proper information from there. But once we develop the model, we don't need to develop this model again and again. Once we develop the model, we can use this model for every plantation, and easily we can get total number of live seedling with the suggested area where we do not the where the plantation is not survived that we need to replant the area so uh, maybe i answer your question properly in, in, thank you thank you torador that was really lovely and quite innovative um just wanted to get folks to um ask questions or make comments i know that you have um an applause from our partner in Brazil, uh, Fabiano. In the meantime, are there any other questions for Todor? One question that I had is where do you go from here? Sorry, pardon, I didn't get your question at once. Where, once. where do you go from here? So what's your next step and next phases in terms of- your actually work. i want to uh, i want to firstly i want to disseminate this information to adopt this technique this is very useful for plantation monitoring so not only bangladesh maybe uh, some in some other area also we can try this we can explore this and the second thing also uh, like as i said that for terrestrial plantation there is some uh, challenges due to the uh, similar uh, similar green under story so i am now working to uh, make a differentiate between the uh, seedling and sapling so uh, if the line and row are very uniform in uh, terrestrial plantation, then maybe it will be uh, possible to differentiate between the uh, shrubs, uh, herbs, and plantation. So uh, I want to explore that also. Nice. 
And uh, Tuan from Vietnam, our partner from Ho Chi Minh City, wants to know how long have you been working on this or how long has it been uh, since this been deployed? Uh, actually, uh, this is a research-based work. So I, I have been working with this since uh, 2022. 2022, yeah. And... Another question that I had is you went through the iTree Academy. I'm not sure if uh, I know that Compass and other partners has led the way in, especially in Dhaka, to do an iTree um, sample plot. How yeah. can can this work in conjunction with that? So you're looking at top down, but then you're going into the field yes. and measuring. Yes, it works. It, it really works. Because like uh, I was uh, directly involved with the iTree activity in Dhaka. So uh, during the sampling design, first we uh, get the satellite imageries and then we make the three strata, like one strata with tree, another was a strata was with no tree, another strata was with a uh, built up area with tree. So we made three strata and then we calculated sample number and we distributed those sample number in three different strata. So in that case, instead of using satellite image, maybe we can use this drone also. But but for these purposes, for this uh, sample uh, planning, uh, sample planning, we can use satellite data. But maybe for any particular landscape uses, landscape planning, site specific planning, then we can use this information. We can use this technique uh, for for uh, urban urban landscape planning. That's great. And uh, in a in a highly dense area like Dhaka, that would I can imagine how this could be very very useful. Uh, where else have you uh, used this application? Uh, actually, uh, I I received a innovation grant project from the uh, Shopal project, like uh, World Bank funded project. So uh, this is the final initial stages. The result will be published in the coming month, and then I will try to. Uh, I try to share this uh, as much as possible, and I I, I want to um, apply this in different uh, different area. So for due to some limitation, I I am not exploring this uh, up to next two months. So as long I'll get approval from them, then uh, then I can do it in everywhere in many other fields. Wonderful, and uh, you have quite a bit of applause in the chat and a comment from our friend in Malawi, uh, where he says the US Forest Service and Oregon State University are partnering with an NGO in utilizing a custom AI to identify photos from camera traps. And it can automatically detect up to 50 species through machine learning. So I guess this is the way forward in the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, drones, to really enhance the work um, and tie together field, uh, the folks working in the field and having a more accurate and detailed map of what they're surveying. Um, and that's a nice bridge right there. Um, we have Iqbal Bai from uh, Bangladesh Forest Department with us, and he has his hands up. Please, you're welcome, Iqbal. Uh, thank you, Liza, and uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Tohid, uh, for his wonderful job and wonderful presentation. Uh, you know that uh, we have been in the, inside the Sundarbans since last three, four days, uh, and uh, you will be here for next uh, another 20, 20 days. For National Forest Inventory. Yeah, uh, the initiative was under the uh, Shupal uh, Sustainable Forest and Livelihood Project uh, funded by World Bank, and uh, it was a, a innovative grant uh, offered by the, uh, the project. And uh, uh, Mr. Tohid has successfully completed uh, the uh, his research work or study uh, for this uh, machine or intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence based uh, plantation detection. So I congratulate uh, Mr. Tohid, and uh, uh, we are in the uh, uh, mangrove so, uh, forest and we are working together in the International uh, Forest Day. And, uh, uh, and uh, we, 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 uh, we convey our best uh, wishes to all uh, the participants. Thank you, Iqbal. Um... I wanted to also ask you, Tordor from India Pali, um, can this technology be used in invasive plant monitoring? 
yes i think it's possible we need to make the, we need to uh, examine some parameter we need to change some parameter and then i think we will be able to make a model to do that and one more thing lisa uh, maybe uh, I, I i drop my email id here so if anyone has any question any suggestion or any comments so maybe uh, could uh, possible to contact with me maybe we can uh, contact and we can collaborate with that Thank you. Wonderful. I think that the application could be far ranging and broad. And I have a feeling that, you know, you are going to have to create some sort of transfer exchange or pack and play where you take your very basics, transfer it to another organization or city, and then just have them and let them know what are the requirements, the basic requirements, and, you know, uh, go from there. So really wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Liza. And thank you all distinguished participants for your time and for your uh, joining. Uh, I, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you and all, of course, uh, Liza and all other uh, uh, friends and colleagues from US Forest Service and, and some other organization. And we'll be very happy if we get opportunity to uh, share our uh, learning with other and in, in new area and in new places. And that will be our, uh, we will be very happy on that. Thank you very much. So, Toyodor, before we say goodbye, we do have one more question. And that's from yeah. Shams at Compass uh, in Dhaka. Uh, can we detect deforestation and forest degradation in remote areas? in Chittagong Hill tracks or other places? Yes, there are a lot of ways to find deforestation and degradation. Actually, uh, to, to detect de deforestation and degradation using drone technology is not that wise because to detect deforestation, is we do not need any very high resolution image. It's possible like one meter resolution image is good enough to find the de uh, uh, deforestation. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, viewers, satellite image like Landsat, like uh, Sentinel-2, so it's possible to use those satellite imagery and easily easily it's possible to detect those deforested area and degraded area. And on top of that, uh, in RIMS unit, we have been doing a national tree assessment, tree cover assessment, uh, the help of US Forest Service and the University uh, of Maryland, GLAD, GLAD Lab of University of Maryland. So we are detecting each and every single tree with the Lancet pig gel across the country. So I think, yeah, it's very possible, very much possible, yeah. Thank you. And with that, I hope that answered your question, Shams. Um, and if there aren't any other comments or questions, I want to uh, take one final word here um, and share my screen for as a reminder for what to look forward to for the rest of the day today on um, this International Day of Forest. So as you can see, um, we've got an, a newsletter and inside the Forest, Forest Service feature story on iTree. So that made the headlines today. And our friends on phytoremediation made the um, panel session at the UN headquarters in New York. And there are a lot of other stuff going on for the next two hours at least at both uh, UN headquarters in New York and the FAO headquarters in Italy. And with that, I'm gonna turn this over one more time to Aisha Gadiali for any final words. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Liza. Thank you to all our speakers. I hope you're able to log in to some of the UN events today or check out some of the posts on social media. And we will look forward to the theme for International Day of Forest 2025. Wonderful. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Bye.